Guys, we're going to have a great episode today. Before we get into that, I want to thank you guys, the listeners, for all the support that you get. I want to remind you that you can reach out to me on Instagram. If you don't follow, follow it at jscottoutdoors. Uh, feel free to send me a DM. I love uh, corresponding with you guys about your hunts and any questions that you might have. Uh, we're going to have a great episode. I also want to thank uh, the sponsors of this podcast. I want to thank GoHunt.com. Cody Nelson, my friend of 20 plus years, he's the glassing guru, the optics authority. He's the optics manager over there at GoHunt.com at the gear shop. Uh, You can reach out directly uh, for info or for sales at 702-847-8747. You can also email him at optics at GoHunt.com. He also uh, gets texts from uh, my listeners at on his cell phone, 602-399-3699. Feel free to send him a text if you're looking for a certain tripod or binocular or spotting scope or rifle scope, anything to do with optics. Uh, give Cody Nelson a call or a text. I want to thank GoHunt.com also and remind you guys that the GoHunt maps, the mobile app, um, mapping apps, are now available on iTunes and Android. Uh, They have real 3D. Um, It's awesome, awesome 3D mapping on these mobile apps. Uh, You can get a free trial, a seven-day free trial, by going to gohunt.com forward slash jscott. You can also check in the show notes. I'll have it linked up. You get a seven-day free trial. That gives you access to everything in the Insider as well as uh, g- let you look at the, the mapping apps uh, both on the desktop and on your phone. Uh, you can also sign up uh, by going to gohunt.com and just use J. Scott, and that's going to save you $50. Uh, you're actually going to get a GoHunt gift card, $50 GoHunt gift card when you sign up. So go check it out. also want to thank Kuyu Ultralight Hunting. That's the gear that I wear on all of my hunts. Go to kuiukuyu.com. Uh, to order the gear right there that are direct to consumer model. Uh, so that's the only place you can get the gear, as well as phonescope.com. Use the JScott21 promo code and you're going to get a 10% discount. Uh, guys, let's get right to this episode. And again, thanks for listening. Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. I've got something special for you today. I've got Cody Nelson, the glassing guru, the optics manager at gohunt.com. I've got Jared Bernstein, the territory rep for Vortex Optics, and I have sitting in front of me some very (laughs) sexy-looking rangefinders. Jay, please. I I, I, I was sweating. Yeah, I was starting to sweat a little bit, but like, hey. It's a little inappropriate, (laughs) right? Perfect. Um, Jared, you finally show up here with something new to show me. I like to come and just tell you something's coming, Jay, and, <laughs> not, and not do it. But I know I could see it on your face last time. So, yeah, these are uh, three new rangefinders uh, here releasing uh, right now, obviously, end of April. Um, you know, previously we had kind of the, the bulk of the rangefinder uh, business has fallen into and the line has developed into a Razor 4000. We had the Ranger 1800, which is the middle middle ground, and then we had what was called the Impact. The and impact. the Impacts took a few a few adjustments over the years. The Ranger took a few adjustments over the years, different technology evolutions, uh, feature set evolutions. Um, but the Impact and the Ranger have gone away, and, and now we have uh, are, are releasing the three... Uh, new range finders and they fall you know the the nice part is they're going to fall with the same series names that reflect the feature set that that vortex has always done so in the in the uh spotting scopes and the binoculars and the rifle scopes we have series that annotate uh typical price point or feature set or or use and these are going to fall right into it so the the three new ones are going to be a crossfire hd 1400 that will replace the impact Uh, that one's going to sit on the shelf at 199 phenomenal unit uh led lit display it'll be red multiple modes angle compensation the whole deal great great unit the diamondback hd will be the next step up just like in the rifle scopes or the binoculars the diamondback hd is going to be a 2000 um same same concept right the the biggest difference going to the diamondback is uh from the crossfire besides glass and, and construction quality is it's going to be a seven power rangefinder versus the crossfire will be a five power uh, range finder. So there's obviously yardage difference. There's obviously, um, you know, feature set difference there. 
Um, both are going to feature a scan feature, so you still have the ability to do the line of sight mode, which is the actual line of sight range, right? They both feature the HCD mode, um, which will compensate for angles, right? And will give you a, a target readout based on the angle of the look. And then you'll still have the scan feature where you can hold it down and get a continuous distance reading uh, kind of while you pan across the, uh, across the landscape. And the third is going to be the Viper HD 3000. That one will be on the shelf at 399. Um, the unique the unique step up is going to be glass quality. It's going to be construction durability. But you're also going to get into a lot of the modes that are found within the Razer uh, 4000. For instance, the last mode, which is going to display the farthest distance when you're ranging. Um, use for that would be. Uh, something kind of standing behind a target and you're trying to gather if you're hitting the bush or hitting the deer that 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 mode can be better for you um, and then it will also feature the ELR mode which slows down the rate of refresh and, and gives you a more reliable reading um, at distance so now we'll have the crossfire at 199 the Viper at, at a 290 or excuse me the Diamondback at 299 the Viper will be at 399 and then the Razor will be at 499 which gives us a giant bowl of, of product to be able to say, okay, what are you to the consumer? What are you doing with it? What's your budget? Do you need ELR? Do you not need ELR? Do you want seven power? Would five power be better? It gives us a lot more tools in the toolbox to be able to, uh, to qualify a customer and appropriately make sure they're in the right product to give them the, the highest success rate. So really, really excited that these are out. And, uh, and they, they all come with the, the tethers. Right. Yep. So they're all going to come with a, a sta they, kind of a static tether, which is just, just a um, call it a piece of 550 cord, effectively, just one length. Um, they all come with the scrunchy the, tether, right? Uh, which is what we have installed here in front of us today, which is nice for you know on a bino harness, clicking it up top and kind of retracting the the mess of a, of and, a then lanyard. Then, and then the the little coyote cases. Yep. All okay. three are going to come with a carrying case nice. and the ability. Um, they come with a little piece of Velcro in there, which will be you know used to to attach that case um, or any other molly type. It, it's just a, a piece of webbing on the back of the case, so you can use a multitude of ways to hook it to a yep. bino harness or a pack or a belt or whatever that is. All same batteries, all same. Uh, and then y you have the Diamondback, the Viper, and the, and the Razors are all tripod mountable? Um, they are they all tripod mountable. The Crossfire will not be. Okay, okay. Uh, but the Diamondback and Up, yep. um, the Diamondback and Up, will be um, tripod mountable. I want to hit on your uh, on your battery question though. The Razor, Diamondback, and Crossfire are all going to work off of a standard CR2. CR2s. The okay. Viper HD is actually going to work off of a CR123. Okay. Which gives it, you know, that's kind of a unique feature for the guy that, that is carrying a Surefire light or something right. and, and has 123s in his kit already or... Or, uh, or even some of the lightweight headlamps are 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 that way for too. For sure, and and let's face it, a CR one twenty three is can be easier to find at a you know gas station or or what have you than a yep. CR two sometimes. So um, having the one twenty three ability in the Vipers, uh, I think that's a pretty pretty neat feature that'll it'll apply to some people, and some people won't care, and some people say, nope, I already carry CR twos, and and so again, just you know, we always try to give options. Options are are a big deal because I mean the three of us sitting here at the table we don't all hunt the same. Yeah. And so it's just And I love different. the uh the the the, the um uh crossfire the diamondback um the uh viper and the uh the razor all have the uh the clips on them. That's one of my favorite features. Yep. Yep. So they have the pocket clips that can be slipped switched to either side so that gives you, you know, Different different options for left-handed or right-handed use, or, or different application based on where you want it to ride around on your on your rig. Um, and the Crossfire does not have a clip, so just a just a tidbit there. That is a uh, that is a feature that is not going to be found on the Crossfire. And all but focus. it does have a case. It does come with a case. Yep, comes with a carrying case. Still comes with two different lanyard options. Um, you know, a, a lot of guys don't use the clip on a rangefinder when they're hiking around and all every now and then i find myself using it when i just need to you know if i'm in an archery hunt i just quickly stash it on a on a chest Start, strap yeah. or something just to get it out of the way so i'm getting ready to take a shot and i don't need it dangling that's around, where i, I found it to go best is on the sternum strap just real quick if you you know if, if it, i'm if, close to something yeah if for you're sure. closer it just depends on, on what you're doing with it but 
Yeah. So when I look at this here, you've got this lineup of the Crossfire, the Diamondback, and the Viper. You've got HD 1400, HD 2000, and HD 3000. Uh, a question that I think a layman would ask is when you've got this number 1400, 2000, and 3000, does that translate to how many yards it's, it's going to shoot? Or is there kind of a, uh, a let's, you know, a, a qualifier or is there a math equation to say well the 14 really shoots out to a thousand or you know 800 the 2000 really shoots to a thousand the 3000 shoots to 50 you want to touch on the what do those targets no absolutely the, yeah. talk about i mean people in general a lot of times don't understand what those numbers actually mean can i shoot that distance what you know with the range finder no that's that's a phenomenal question um the the max range is what's listed so when you when you say diamondback hd 2000 that's going to be the max range on a reflective target. Um, that could be a truck. It could be a dumpster. It could be something something typically metal that has that the has best reflective quality. Exactly. Right. Yep. That's the best case scenario. Um, in the past, what the general rule of thumb was: take the number that they say it'll do and divide it by half. That's your animal number. Okay, deer, elk, bear. That's your animal number. Um, as technology has evolved, it's actually pushing more toward 60 or 70 percent of correct. the listed numbers where we're going to be on an animal. So if we were going to talk about the Diamondback 2000, for instance, um, max reflective range is going to be 2000. Um, when, when our spec sheet will actually read out what it'll do on a tree, something of that type of composition, um, and that's 1,800 yards on that 2,000-yard unit. So you're losing about 10 percent to go to a tree. Um, our deer range or animal range is going to be listed at 1400 yards on that unit. So you're, you're, you're stepping down in that and that, and that those numbers will work across all of these. So if you okay. wanted to run it on the Viper, you'd be 3000 on a truck, 2000 on a tree, or excuse me, 2300, 2350 on a tree and 2000 on a deer. Gotcha. So, but the general rule of thumb is as range finders have progressed, that number has increased. It has Meaning it used to just be you know, a 50% figure, and that's about what you can shoot, you know, hit an animal with and, and get a reading. It has, yep. And it's definitely gotten better. Well, and I think the, the you know, from a salesman's kind of perspective, you know, I get guys a lot of time that, that they're, they, they, they don't look at a certain range finder, oh, I'd never shoot that far, or I'd never, well, we're not, we're not saying you're shooting that far, we're just, but what if the deer's at, you know, 2,000 yards and you got that range and you know that the hill, you know, across from the deer is at, you know, 1,800 yards? Well, you know, now you have, you know, a couple hundred yard shot. So there's ways to do the math to, to figure out, hey, how, where do I have to get to get closer? And, and you can go do that. So that's that's a really, um, you know, I, 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 I just would tell people it, just because it says 3,000 or 4, that no one's saying that or shooting or doing those things no. those yardages it just it, it it allows you and gives you more space to do the the lower yardages or the shorter yardages more effectively is what i that, that's it's what a, i try it's to a data collection it. i mean i'll give you exactly a, a real world example when we were hunting those bulls in unit nine at, at the day after thanksgiving we were right on the boundary of the res and I'm looking at my go hunt maps, and I can see where my pin is, and I can see the res line, and I know that there's 400 yards between me and the res line. Well, when I look to that direction and I use the scan feature, I can figure out where that res line is based on what the readout. So it's a Correct. data collection tool, yep. like Cody said, just as much as it is a, a animal ranging Correct. tool for the purposes we're using it. And then now we were able to, and truth be told, one of the bulls that we were getting ready to shoot was, from what I could tell, about 40 yards into the illegal. <laughs> and we had to wait until... Wait until we were good, right? That's a gigantic no-no. But between technology evolving, having the access to my go hunt maps, and having the access to a rangefinder that had that capability, I was able to, A, not do something illegal, which is phenomenal, right? And good then, job. B, know exactly when I could start shooting. And that was – that's a What was the old saying, deal. Jay? Four, four strands good, five strands bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One thing that strikes me um, in looking at this, I mean – You've got a price point of one ninety nine. You've got this crossfire that literally will fit in your front pocket. Absolutely. And you yeah. basically won't even know it's there. It's I mean, it's with extremely, the, with extremely the ranging lightweight. capability, I mean, you could take that out on a coos deer hunt and, you know, if it's 1,400, you're probably going to be able to range six, 700 yards. For, for price point, for starters, for range finder, 
What an awesome and, and sub five ounces. Uh, exactly. I will, I mean, I will look make how light that is. It's an incredibly small light unit. I, I I I will absolutely say this with certainty and in my beliefs that if you are not using a rangefinder, you are making a mistake. Both from for me personally, like as an as an ethical question. And I realize that there's a lot of things out there where people would say, oh, that's cheating. Look, I, I don't care. But when you're taking something's life, and let's be honest, that's what, what we're talking about. I want to be as accurate and perfect as possible. And I think for, for 200 bucks, and, and the fact that you could that's range. That's what so, I mean. Th- it's there's, incredible. There is no reason not to have a range finder. Right. And I would just tell people that, that it, 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 no range find, or some range finder is better than no range finder. And yeah. I and for two hundred dollars, everything you're getting with that, I, I there's no reason not to have one. And then the the other observation that I have, and you kind of hit on it a little bit, Jared, is from a company standpoint, trying to keep your messaging with, um, you know, you have the Ranger, you have the Razor, trying to keep you know Crossfire, Diamondback, Viper, and get your levels, if you will. Well, that's the first thing I to said not to him. Confuse the, yeah. the consumer. Talk a little bit about that with the, the choice of, of the names well, to we've kind of that. coincide I, I, with Jared, what I'm just gonna, people I'm gonna, already understand. That's the first thing I was like, oh, well, I mean, this just helps me, you know, like line out, you know, the, the price points and levels to match the rest of the, the, the deal. I mean, that was the first thing I, I was, this is amazing. From a brand recognition, recognition standpoint, excuse me. That's that's a huge feature for you know for Cody's position. He automatically knows where to go. the The retailer staff training is a lot easier, and then you're getting a more educated yeah. you know retail staff that can then pass that education to consumer versus you know a guy that says okay an impact. Well, the impact's a great unit, and the impact sold it sells it's you know sold great up until yesterday, literally you know, and these are being released today. Um, it's a phenomenal unit, but no one knew where it was. Is an impact a two thousand dollar you know, right. high, high quality glass unit. Is it a, is it a $120, you know, starter for a kid? Is it, you know, where, just where from the fall? name, there's no understanding exactly. of where, where it hits. Yeah. Cause the other, these other series have been around so long that people understand a, a Viper is going to be an extremely quality unit. It may be missing one or two features of a razor and it may feature construction that doesn't necessarily, you know, the top construction, but it also means that the manufacturing and all wasn't as long and therefore not as expensive. So you can understand kind of what, what budget and what, uh, what feature set you're going to get into a lot easier being that these other products have been out so long and talked about for so long that now those, those names help us understand where we fall. Brand recognition. Um, one of the other things that probably should be talked about, I didn't hear you say it yet. Um, glass and electronics, VIP warranty. Yep, no questions. No yeah. questions. It's the same thing, you know. Tripods, range finders. We don't have a single product that we don't that we don't apply to that to that concept. And you know, again, this is a, a smaller unit that's on your chest in the rain and everything else. And knowing you're covered is a is a great great little feature. And does that mean you know you have an issue? You just ship it back and they fix it. And if they don't fix it and can't fix it, they send they you. They can't a new fix one? it. You get a new one. Yeah. yeah. And 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 our repair team. I mean, you want to talk about some people that are that are not only extremely talented from a technical standpoint, but you know they're dealing with folks that that are maybe upset, right? If if they broke something on a hunt or something, God forbid, failed on a hunt, which, truthfully, either we we see things break um, a whole lot more than just a, a, you know a rangefinder stop working. That's, that's honestly a very, very limited portion, but it, it's the fact of it. You put out, you put out units, you're going to have some that just simply don't want to, don't want to cooperate. Um, and those people are just phenomenal in that department at, at making things, just making it happen. That's, that's the philosophy. It just, and they do on a daily basis. Fantastic. Well, Cody, I'll bet you're excited to uh, see this. Yeah, I mean, we're we're super excited over this. Um, yeah, it, it, this is uh, this is a good thing. It's a big thing for Vortex, and and it allows the vendors to to align with with price point and and, and product, and and I'm super excited about it. these. Uh, you know, they're in stock, and I mean, they're ready to ship. Awesome. Uh, guys, thanks for coming out. Jared, thanks for showing this. I uh, can't wait to release this and get this out to the public out there. And um, guys, uh, want to give you a chance, Cody, uh, to let the listeners know how they can reach out to you and and find out more about these uh, new Vortex products as well as anything else. Yeah, best best and easiest way is to, to uh, optics at gohunt.com. 
and uh, I will answer your questions as quickly and efficiently as I can. Fantastic. Happy to. Jared, great having you here. Cody, always great having you here. And um, guys, look forward to a great spring and summer season, and fall will be here before we know it. Thank you for the opportunity again, Jay. Yep. You bet. Thanks, Any last Jay. things from you, Jared? No, no, just as always, you know, Vort Vortex, we appreciate this opportunity to sit down with you uh, on the podcast to have Cody here and, and the, the face that we have with, uh, with Go Hunt. And uh, we're excited for these things to start, start making their way to boxes. Awesome. Guys, thanks for listening. God bless. Take care.